Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Pro Trader, Trader webinar series. Uh, today we have Tom B. So new entry here. Uh, uh, Tom is a futures trader. You're probably familiar with him uh, in our Discord chat room. Uh, anyway, Tom's uh, going to be talking about uh, integrating book map and auction market theory uh, together with volume profile in the intraday developing time frame. Uh, let's go over a little bit of uh, uh, Tom's background here. He's been trading both professionally and individually since 1980. He focuses primarily on the ES and NQ futures markets. His trading process encapsulates the use of bookmaps order flow tools within volume profile and auction market theory. Tom analyzes the larger market structure and executes within developing intraday timeframes. Uh, there's some contact information for Tom if you're interested. Uh, first off, there's going to be a new uh, bookmap discord live market narration room with Tom. Uh, Tom will be going through uh, uh, just periodically throughout the day. Uh, you guys are, are probably familiar with him already if you're in the discord room. Uh, he's been doing this for a while via text. So we're going to give his fingers a, a bit of a break. Uh, there will be two rooms here. There will be a voice room. Uh, so that uh, Tom can uh, go through it uh, using his um, his microphone and uh, guide you guys through with a with a um, screen share as well, uh, and then uh, uh, to um, you know you'll be able to reply via text uh, in a um, uh, related uh, a text channel as well that'll be right there. So under the same name, both are under the same name there, uh, and you can reach out to Tom on Discord right now uh, under Tom B. Uh, and then you've got his number there as well. Uh, and then also his Twitter uh, handle, uh, at Roz Tom, uh, if you want to look at uh, many of the images that uh, he, he's going to be presenting uh, during this uh, uh, this session here. Uh, I've got to go through the risk disclosures, and then we'll turn it right over to Tom. Uh, general disclosure, all bookmap limited, limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading executed in simulation demo is is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. I don't think Tom is trading live, but we're just going through the disclosures nonetheless. Risk disclosure. Uh, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. We do have the hypothetical uh, performance disclosure here. Uh, this is mostly, though, for um, uh, automated trading. Uh, you can take a look at that if you like, and I can put it into the chat if you want to read through it as well. Uh, anyway, uh, without further ado, let's turn it over to Tom and uh, let him uh, take it away. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Tom, you should see the uh, button. There you go. Perfect. Okay, can you see my full screen? Yes. Okay, let me just move Trading is a journey, around. not a destination. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> well, a little bit about me, and I want to thank everyone from, uh, for taking some time and coming to visit with us today. I hope you're going to get uh, some value from this. I'm going to be moving very quickly. Uh, it might feel like you're drinking from a fire hose, so please feel free to uh, review this again if you find anything that might be helpful or resonate with you. Um, I started in 1980 as an off-floor uh, screen trader. Um, the first thing I did was learn classical bar charting. I took a course at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Um, and of course, uh, you know, learned uh, the things we all do when we start out, head and shoulders, uh, triangles, pennants, flags, you know, all that, uh, wedges. Um, at the time, uh, our technology was uh, very robust. Uh, it was a ruler and a pencil. So that's where I was. This was pre-computer pretty much, other than terminals. Um, at the time also, technical analysis was looked down upon. It was very much fundamentals or you were into voodoo 
and uh, you're in the corner with uh, some bones that you were shaking on the floor. So that was pretty much the view. Uh, around 1982, I met George Lane. Uh, now, so you know, George invented stochastics. I think invented might be appropriate here, but he created stochastics. And those of you who are in, uh, understand oscillators know what those are. And that kind of predated developments like CCI, RSI, MACDs, Bollinger's, and all of the volatility and moving average uh, uh, concepts. You guys have probably been there, right? Uh, 1985, I heard about a new process uh, called market profile. And uh, what got me interested in market profile was the concept of auction market theory, the auction. And that resonated with me. And I'd always thought previously of the market as an auction process, but this actually put it into some context in the sense of someone else was talking about it. Um, and eventually this got licensed by the uh, Chicago Board of Trade, and the person who created it was uh, Peter Stottlemyre, um, and he created something called the Market Logic School, and I went to that school to learn market profile, um, and uh, he taught the class, so I actually learned from the creator. It was very interesting. And along the way, um, I was managing money. I just want to say that there was some more things going on. Uh, 1987, I thought, you know, it would be nice maybe to have a system, you know, trying to be a discretionary trader with all that was going on, uh, using indicators and all. There was a lot of conflict in that. So uh, the first iteration of, um, uh, of system writing, shall we say, for the uh, non-program oriented individual uh, was a DOS-based system and it was designed where you could write a system that was based on daily bars and you could back test. And this was my first introduction uh, to system writing. And I did a bunch of work with that because uh, I was interested in uh, swing trading trend following at that time. I mean, the S&P at that time would, uh, let's say in the mid eighties, you know, could have a five or six point range. It was the big S&Ps, $250 a point, um, which can give you some indigestion. Uh, anyway, you're actually right now, if you uh, have heard of TradeStation and quote easy language, uh, System Rider was the chassis that TradeStation was built on. That was uh, Bill and Ralph Cruz out of Miami. Uh, 2000, uh, I got interested in Elliott Wave, FIBs, FIB projections, all this kind of thing and start creating my own hybrid indicators. Um, and I worked. I mean, this is the journey, right? Uh, have we all been there? Uh, unless you uh, got hit by lightning uh, and woke up as a natural trader, um, this is kind of typical, I think, of the things we do. Uh, we're, not, we're looking for something that can resonate. And uh, what happened in 2009 uh, was I heard about the initiation of volume available with price. So profiles, but instead of being time-based, which they previously were, because there was no real volume available, it became volume-based. Also in 2009, um, I met other traders, and from one of them, I adapted the concept of multiple time frame profiles. Before this, I always thought of them in a daily time frame. Multiple time frame uh, is basically when you have overlapping days, and that creates something called a composite or micro composite. Same functionality as the developing time frame, the interday time frame, but this is a multiple higher time frame. Same thing we all do, right? Except this is represented by volume. And then, of course, 2016, I was an early adopter of Bookmap. I looked at a lot of tools um, which were out there on the market. And uh, based on uh, what I observed, Bookmap seemed to be the best tool for me and it might be one of the best decisions i ever made to be able to get down to the granular level when it comes to actually initiating in the market based on the context just a moment having just a little trouble here we go okay so I'm going to ask you to do me a favor, and I apologize if I impose upon you. Please grab a pen and a piece of paper. Take a few notes. I'm going to be giving you a few numbers, not much, 
and uh, I promise uh, it won't be an imposition, but it might be helpful for what we're going to be looking at. Some of the terms and descriptions used are derivative of market and volume profile terminology. Those of you who are familiar with it, you know what this is. But others, you, others that are here today might want to just write these down so you, you'll have a uh, understanding of what they, what they define. And also, we're going to have some other terms that are my own definitions that I have developed, and they're probably not going to be in the common literature. Okay, now I'm going to attempt to share as much detail as possible, and I'm going to be drilling down to micro time frames. So I'm going to be going, you might say, inside out. So I'm going to be showing you intermediate time frame and how to potentially work inside, starting from the micro time frame, and I mean with the scalpel on up. And I hope you can follow. And I apologize in advance if this, you know, was a little bit overwhelming because I have to move quickly. But I do hope you'll review it if anything resonates with you. So here's the process. I'm a process-oriented individual. So auction market theory, how does the market work? Volume profile, the optical representation of the auction, the time frame we operate in, what is the context of that time frame? And then book map is the tip of the spear. So what kind of trader are you? Are you an intermediate time frame uh, trader, swing trader, day trader? Um, what fractal do you trade in? Do you, do you trade inside the time frame? In other words, where are you in this? Do you like to trade uh, three-point swings, four-point swings? Uh, or do you want the eight or 10 point? And I'm referring to ES. Well, inside of all of these fractals, you can have a trend. If you're a three point trader, that is really a micro trend or a five point uh, trader. I hope you're following with me. It's all the same, it is generic. Now, one of the obstacles uh, is defining context. And this took me a while to understand. You know, a lot of us, uh, when the market moves, we kind of shift into a gear, the market's going up, and all we do is buy, 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 right? And that's nice if it's a trend day, right? Because that's really what you want to do. But what happens when the market becomes rotational? If we use the same process that we used when the market was expanding its range, and we just keep doing the same thing when that context or behavior changes, we're going to potentially give back what we gained earlier. Or if the market context is not range expansion, but balance, in other words, trading both sides, we have the potential to not have a good outcome. That's what context is about. It's about recognizing. And the other thing is, in an intermediate time frame, the trend can be up, but we can be short, right? Because we're trading a counter rotation. So the thing about time frame is you select your sandbox. Okay, and in that sandbox, you define that time frame and you operate in that sandbox. So it's kind of breaking it up when we say fractals into chunks. And depending on your time frame, and this is really a function of risk reward, things of this nature, the range you need to operate in, you know, execution, obstacles, you know, for scales, targets, all of this. However, you define that, that's your sandbox. And this sandbox can change based on range. So there's a number of variables here. Now, I want to mention something about auction market theory, if you're not familiar with it. The market, wait, where, what is the concept of an auction? Well, what goes on in auction? Buyers and sellers come together. Price is set through a process, and it's called price discovery. Buyers and sellers will continue to move the market in one direction or the other until the opposite force is motivated. Um, the market's going to go up as high as it needs to uh, to find the sellers or as low as it needs to in order to motivate the buyers. And this happens in all time frames. That's the fractal nature of this. And another way to think of this and the way I, mentally I process this thought is the market will continually check prices similar to a grocery store. Because after all, grocery store, they call it the market, right? So if a product goes on sale, buyers will buy it up just ask my wife how that works right now if a product is priced too high it can shut off the buyers think about it yourself something goes on sale you buy a few extra they put the price back up 
and they keep raising it and raising it. At some point you're saying, I'm not gonna pay that. Well, that's the auction. That's how the auction works. So what's gonna happen is at some point, this market's gonna find balance between the buyers and the sellers. As a seller or a manufacturer, you wanna sell as much product as possible and make a profit. And as a buyer, you're gonna buy what you perceive to be a fair price. And that's where that intersection of price and volume takes place. And that's called a high volume note in profile language. In addition, and this is something I've based my process on, and I'm going to demonstrate it to you, the market can revisit other previous areas of balance or high volume to check if the current price is too high or the previous lower high volume price is still too low. And I call this a price check in aisle three. Have you ever heard him say that in the supermarket or uh, the store? Price check in aisle three. Well, the auction process works the same way. Now, what about volume profile? I, I want to touch on volume profile. What is this? Why, what's it used for? It used, it's used to gauge the auction process. And the thing that really impressed me about volume profile is that might be the purest real-time representation of value, since it doesn't rely on backward-looking lagging indicators. Now there's nothing wrong with it, a lagging indicator if it works for you, but I want to be just like with Bookman. I want to be at a granular level. I want immediate input. I don't want to be looking, waiting for something to cross over uh, and the market's already moved away. That's my personal process. So the auction process represents the current auction pro discovery process. And the profile helps me identify potential locations to engage with the market. And then uh, book map is really the tip of the spear. So what does book map do? Well, book map works across futures, equities, and crypto. Uh, what I found about Bookmap that really helped me was seeing the real-time behavior of the liquidity, and that's represented in the heat map. Those of you who use the product are familiar for, with this. Uh, so that liquidity is a limit order book. And we can also see algo behavior that might influence, uh, temporarily influence or impact the market. Uh, it has, uh, on, and these are some of the tools I use that really are great. Uh, a stop and iceberg detector, absorption, stop sweeps, because that is giving me insight to who the participants are. You know, when we see a, a bar, a price bar, or even the price going up and down, it's not the same. If it's just stops, it's not the same as new buying. Does that make sense? Or new selling? Um, also, session volume delta. And of course, the volume profile is part of it. And for me, having this insight gives me an edge over less informed traders. Just think about it. If you're a new trader, chances are you're not aware of order flow yet or even of tools like Bookmap. And the other thing about Bookmap is they're continually innovating. Uh, and there's always, uh, they have great education, which is really helpful, obviously. So that's our basis. That's my process. So here's how I think about it. I think about this as the volume profile, and you would think about it as your charts or indicators, whatever you use, that's the chassis that you run your trade on. That's the underlying support to help you identify behavior and potentially locations to interact with the market. Now, here's something I found, uh, because I initially in my trading career was at the opposite end of the spectrum. In other words, use minimum consistent non-random inputs. Very important. Initially, I'm risk adverse. I wanted to squeeze risk out. My perception of squeezing risk out was more, more inputs, more indicators. I wanted, you know, more information. And that's just because I'm an analytical individual. But the fact is, more creates conflict, inconsistency. And if you're trying to create something that can give you a positive expectancy, you need to have consistency. So I don't even use indicators at this point because I have the profile and then I have book map to help me get to the granular level. And something else that many don't uh, accept unless you've been trading a while, uh, the outcome of any one trade is random. So I work mentally in a state of I know I don't know. 
it really lets me off the hook to need to be right. I can detach myself emotionally from the outcome. I, even though I get emotional, you know, my strings are pulled, right? I do experience some fear and doubt. I do experience some euphoria when I get a 20 point run in the ES. That is going to happen. But I know that that I'm wired for that. But I know I cannot allow it to influence me. I have to just put it aside. I, can, I can't stop experiencing it because we're wired. But I know that that doesn't belong in the trading business. So I accept randomness. When you anchor, uh, your inputs in minimum without conflict, then you can determine if your process can create a positive expectancy over a large sample size. Sample size means 30 to 50 iterations. Now, if you don't anchor, you have random inputs in a random market, as far as any one trade, you're going to get chaos. Now, most of us, I would accept since we've been trading for a while, or even if we're new, we understand uh, that as retail traders, um, we put our stops in the same place. We tend to behave kind of like a small herd running around, right? Especially initially. But I think like a retail trader, but I don't want to act like a retail trader. So think about it. We trade in the day time frame usually. Who are we typically trading against? We're typically trading against other traders like us, unless a higher time frame participant comes into the market. So if you're on the other side of your trade, what would your behavior be? What would your emotional state be? Where might your stop be clustered? Do you think it might be with everybody else? Where might you bail if you're on the other side of your trade? Where might you anticipate the opposing force coming in? Let me give you an example. Trade, you know, trade the mid, right? Trade the mid. Pull back, trade the mid. Any of us, raise your hand, right? Have we all done this? All right. Well, we know if the market's going up, that there's a possibility that there will be, let's just say, buyers at that mid. What can we anticipate at the mid? A counter rotation, at least. And then where do the stops get pulled? Don't they get clustered behind the mid? New initiators at the mid? Trailing stops getting pulled up to the mid. Are you following me? What is under that mid? Fuel. Now, if you're short, would you possibly target the mid because you expect retail behavior at that location? You, and expect isn't the right word, you, uh, there's potential big counter rotation that'll happen because of the automatic mid buyers. If the mid fails, then your trade will go on. If it rotates off, you just might want to scale in front of the mid, or if it makes sense, maybe reverse and get long at the mid, subject to the context. So the way I think in my process is if this, then that. And the way I do this is I stay in the flow by narrating. And I strongly recommend that you narrate because it's the easiest way to stay in the context and recognize when it changes. And changing context is really where not only you can take advantage of an opportunity that might present itself because other retail traders are gonna be offside, but you can also use the change in the context to protect yourself, get out of the market, reverse, look for a continuation, many different things. So I'm always thinking in, if this, then that. If this, then that. If it comes back to the mid and it reverses, then that. If it gets to the mid and it doesn't do it, then what? What does it mean? It's very much like playing chess. You make a move, you anticipate the move from the other side. If they don't make that move, then what's going on? You following me? So it's really strategy. But since we understand retail trader behavior, we want to be thinking from both sides. So this way we can recognize when we see behavior that's not aligned. And so what do you do? You adjust your plan, or you have a different setup for the uh, context that's developing, or you just wait for alignment in your time frame. That's all subject to your trading plan. I hope that makes sense. So we are gonna look at a couple different contexts today, and I'm gonna be moving quickly through it. Uh, so forgive me. 
uh, in advance, okay? We're gonna look at the micro time frame fractal alignment within an intermediate time frame. We're gonna also look at another sequence, how to recognize change in a context from a directional move to a counter rotational phase and how you might use this. And then if we have time, and Bruce, you'll let me know if, we, if I take too much time, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna share an advanced concept. It's called the closing swing trade. Uh, it's like a special team. You, know, you bring out the kicking team, it's for one play. And if there's time permitting, we'll do that. And also I'm gonna uh, offer you an invitation uh, later on. So I'm gonna ask you here, please write down a few terms and numbers uh, and then uh, we'll get started. So get, grab that pen and paper and forgive me for imposing. Uh, this is really more for those of you who are not familiar with the terms market profile and volume profile, plus uh, a few terms that I've created. So first of all, volume point of control, it's called the VPOC, V-P-O-C. It is the highest volume location where the volume is traded for the day. Now, the thing about the volume point of control, it's not stationary, it moves around. And that gives you information also. And I'm gonna be showing you how that works. Uh, my own term is called a variable high volume node, VHVN. You'll see them on my chart, so please write them down. V, like Victor, HVN, variable high volume node. And what this represents is the migration of that VPOC. So as it moves around during the day, the volume is shifting, I'm gonna track where it was previously. Does it move away? Does it come back? What does it do? Remember price check in aisle three, right? The market goes up, there's a price, and it may come back and check a previous price. Those levels are important to gauge the auction. Then there's the migration of the VHVN, of that variable high volume. Which direction is it going? What might it tell us? Two other uh, definitions. Low volume node, it's called an LVN. All that is is a separation or a low volume area where price didn't stick around. It traded there, there wasn't much volume, it moved away. It defines a separation, typically between a balance area, which is another term, so you're not confused, of consolidate. It's consolidation, but in profilage, uh, it's called balance. And there's one more. It's called the initial balance high or initial balance low, initial balance. And what that is is the first hours high or low. And this evolved because uh, when Peter Stottlebyer created market profile, most volume runs through in the first hour of trade. Multiple part time frame participants typically do business, and then they'd all go to breakfast. I mean, this is how it used to be over at the CBOT and the CN. Everybody would go to breakfast after the first hour. I think of a place called, uh, I think it was Manny's down on Jackson. No, it's no longer there, unfortunately, because we don't have four traders. So those are the terms. First hour high or low, I be high, I be low. Okay, you with me so far? All right, let's take a look at a chart here. Let me just clear some off my screen. That's a little bit in the way. Sorry. Okay. All right. This is uh, December 7th. And that's when we had the huge gap up after the heavy sell down. This was that 36 point gap higher day. Now I'm going to walk you through this. This is a micro time frame. This chart is representing a minute and 45 seconds. So you might say this is micro, you know? So let's look at what happens. Now, when you get a huge gap like that, and the day before the market closed, uh, and it looked like it might be in a bullish configuration, it looked like a reversal was setting up, but we were still in a balanced area. In other words, it was overlapping. So no idea that it would be this kind of a gap or any kind of gap because we know we don't know so but when you get a gap like this what do we anticipate remember if this then that uh we anticipate what's called responsive selling or profit taking i mean if you were long you get a 30 36 point gap i don't know about you but i might take a little off the table so that's why we anticipate that 
So let's look at what happens. Now I'm thinking typical behavior, if this, then that, gap higher, you're gonna get some buyers, then it's gonna roll over and those buyers who buy breakouts, their stops will be underneath the open and they'll get taken out. So as they say, fools rush in. I've heard that term before, maybe you have. Uh, I'm gonna wait because I'm looking for that, that uh, move down and then I'm gonna look and see what happens because maybe this is just a gap up and then we're gonna fill the gap or we'll go half gap. I don't know. Since I know I don't know, I have to stay in, in the moment and try to read the context. So here's what happens. And book map, by now, this is where book map comes in. We get the gap higher. This is uh, sellers. These uh, purple dots are sellers. So even though we have buyers, this is showing me that there are sellers on the other side of this trade. Liquidity comes in right here. I guess, what are they doing? Maybe they want to buy. I don't know what they're doing. I just want to skew the book. I don't know. So they can sell higher. I don't know. So I'm observing. If this, then that. Then we get some sellers here. That's what, by the way, these dots, the green dot means positive delta in the volume for that uh, time period. It's aggregated or uh, the red dot means uh, sell delta. So I have sellers right here, but the green dots show me absorption. That's interesting. And this liquidity comes up. I guess we can assume it was this guy, right? Boom, moves higher. Now, I don't know for sure but that's how I anticipate what that might mean. Remember, potential. So now we trade into this. And even though we see sellers here, there's buyers showing up again. Now, here's something I want you to look at. This little line over here, that is the first volume. In other words, that's the VPOC. Now, when it first opens up, it's not necessarily that relevant, but it's something I look at and I'm going, okay, there's the volume. We move high and I mark it. I call it a VHVM, remember? Variable high volume node. Also, I mark the opening swing. So this is the opening swing. Well, as I see it, market goes up, market goes up, and then we pull back. The VPOC moves up. We test the VPOC. Okay, these guys are buying. All right, still too early because I'm thinking, all right, now here come the sellers. If this, then that. Buyers, pull back. Where do we pull back? To the VHVM. Price check in aisle three. I'm still not looking for it to go up. I'm just waiting to see what it's going to do. Now, here's something we've all experienced in trading. I think it's a one or two tick of the opening swing low. So I move my opening swing low down a little bit, but only 19 stops go up. Now, that is, I call that a stop pick. Anybody here ever get their stop picked off? So that's where the term stop pick came from. Only 19. Well, that's really low, don't you think? Interesting. The market comes up to the VPOC again. Right here, price check in aisle three. What happens? It's still too high. Huh. Well, I'm not getting long yet. I'm still thinking it's going to break. If this, then that. But then something changes. First of all, we don't take out that low. That's interesting. We break above the VPOC. So what did it tell me? Too low, too low. See here how it bounced off? See the change in behavior? We come up. Now what? We take out the opening swing high. That is information. That is telling me, in spite of my anticipation of it going lower, that it's now going higher and it took out the opening swing high. It appears that buyers might be taking control. If this, then that. If not this, then what? There's the then what. And we pull back. Price check in aisle three. We come back. This is my over under at the moment. That's a long for me. Or if not a long, an indication to look for a long. Now, my first target up here, is the overnight high or ETH high. I just want you to know that. The reason is there's a high probability that that price point will be checked during the RTH session. And it's over a 90% probability. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a sharp gap open. I fail to take out that gap low by more than a, full, a few ticks. 
I've rejected the lower price after testing the VPOC uh, over in this area. I've come back after taking the overnight high. If this, then that. I hope you guys are with me. So now, uh, please write these numbers down, and they're going to be important. This is intermediate time frame numbers, same behavior at a higher time frame. So let's go in sequence. First of all, overnight high 4656.75. This is our first target. The next target is 4672.50. That is a micro composite VPOC. Don't let the term uh, disturb you. All it is is intermediate time frame. Same behavior as this guy right here, except intermediate time frame. Then we have a micro composite low volume node. And I'll explain what a low volume node is. Remember, it's an area that wasn't traded very much. It wasn't auctioned. And that's 4681, write that down. And then we have what's called a naked volume point of control at 4698, write that down. And what that is is the same as the VPOC, except it's in a daily time frame. These are intermediate time frames. This one is an artifact that's left behind in the daily time frame where it auctioned and it was the most accepted price previously. And the market has a tendency, remember price check in aisle three in all time frames. It has the tendency to go back to this price at 98 and this price at 72. And as you know, we know we don't know because this is trading. We don't know how, we don't know if, and we don't know when. Other than that, we certainly know a lot, don't we? <laughs> so let's go to the next slide and see what happens. But how this is gonna work is I'm gonna try to pick up on the next slide from where we just left off right over here. Whoa, hold on, here we go. We pushed the wrong button and there's chaos. Okay, all right, so this was that long that I was just showing you. This is the VPOC. Here's what happens. The market extends off that long and where do we go? Let's go over here, overnight high. First statistic is now meant, met. And there's our target. Is that a surprise? Well, of course it is, except that's what the setup was. And here's the next thing that's really important to me. The VPOC moves. What is that saying? It's saying is volume is following price. It's saying that this at the moment is too low. It's rejected this price. So now we're up here and, but we hit the target. What happens to targets that are common targets? And the overnight uh, stat over 90 percentile is a common target. What do I anticipate? If this, then that, counter rotation. Where's my next setup though? Well, in an uptrend for me, and this is uh, past performance, it's not indicative of future results. You guys all know that. You gotta do your homework and vet your own ideas. We pull back to the VWAP. The VWAP volume weighted average price is derivative and it has a similar function to a VPOC, except it's a longer time frame. okay? So we pull back the VWAP. I understand in my setups that the potential to reverse and check the VPOC is a reasonable probability. And you need to do your research to see what the percentile, uh, percentile probability is that that will happen. So if I get long here, if I do, where's my obstacle? Price check, because we might come up here and fail or return down here, right? Can do anything. So scale obstacle next test of this high get through potential to continue do i know no i don't know so now we pull back and we pull back in test over here what if this then that if not this then what i'm anticipating price check in aisle three higher doesn't do it now what back to the VWAP. Now, what do you do with this? Well, depending on your time frame, you're trailing your stop, or once it goes through here, you're out, subject to your plan. VWAP, and look at the price check from underneath. We don't get above it. Pullback, price check, you see the behavior? Pullback, 
price check. And then we finally break out of it. But we don't get over this high. We still have the overnight high sitting here as a reference, selling. Now we sell, but what do I see here? Market's going down. Sellers were in here. Those buyers came in here and bought off the VWAP. They were met with sellers. So now I don't know what's going to happen. If this, then that. If this can't get back above this uh, VPOC right here, then we can come all the way down and wipe out and take those stops, right? These stops are down below here. I know I don't know. So if this, then that. If not this, then what? That's what. This, by the way, becomes a low volume node. I want you to see what they look like. Over here, this is a micro balance. That was a consolidation. That's what represents this volume over here. And you see the low volume in here? That is where we left this area behind and we moved up to auction this area. And these rotations are auctions, up, down, up, down. And when the VPOC moves up, it's saying is this is now considered the fair price. This was unfair down here. And that's what this VHVN represents. This was a previous VPOC location that we left behind. By the way, and I didn't point this out, I apologize. When we pull back to VPOC, uh, VWAP, what was that aligned with? The opening swing high. Is that something that might be a, give you some insight? We have uh, a pull back to the opening swing, pull back to VWAP. This is your obstacle, VPOC scale. Hope that makes some sense. So let's look at what happens here. We come back again. Now, if this, then that. I don't know if it's too high or too low. We pull back, we move up. I still have this obstacle. This is consolidation. Pull back, and then we blow up in here. Now, if you were holding longs from down here, you're just riding through this. If you're a scalper, you can participate in this if there's enough range. This is all subject to your plan. We pull back, we go up. Look what happens here. And I want to point something out I didn't mention. Do you see 416? These are buy stops. This is a short squeeze. We normally, we see a lot of stops flying around in the ES, but when you see 400, you start seeing big numbers, that gives you insight. And Bookmap is really helpful for that because it's saying to me, wow, we've got a short squeeze going on. Now, buy stops, what are they? Buyers. So there's support under this market. If you're off sides and you're stuck short, and let's say you're an intermediate player uh, or even a retail player, uh, these rotations, you're going to be potentially using counter rotations to cover. You're going to be praying for a counter rotation, and that actually creates support under the market. And that's why in trend days, we, we see shallow counter rotations and expanding upside rotations. And I know you guys know this. So here we go into this liquidity. Now, this is going to be interesting what happens right here. Now, when I see liquidity like this, and this is what's different about this liquidity versus this, this is resting liquidity. It's sitting in the book. It means more to me. Uh, and remember, with liquidity, we really don't know what's going on until we know. I mean, it could be a spoof. It, it could just be manipulation in the book. It could be algo activity. Uh, but for me, if it's sitting in the book, it means business to me, and I just watch it closely. And I want to watch the reactions off of this uh, liquidity. So we have 300 buy stops go into these guys, right? By the way, if you were long, what might you do with that? Might you scale ahead of it because it's sitting liquidity? Just something to think about. So there's the fuel, and we reverse off it. Now I'm going, if this, then that. Now, what can happen here? Well, it could reverse out of here. We could come back here. We could, come, you know, we could go, right? It can do anything. So I know I don't know. But if I'm following my plan and my plan is to scale, I may be out, right? But the thing is, I have targets higher up. Remember those numbers we wrote down? We have another target up at 72, 72.50. Well, I trade towards targets because I'm trading behavior. So I'm looking now, if I get a rotation down, I may add if I'm holding longs or I may initiate if I'm not long. You know, Again, past performance, not indicative of future results.
That's one of the things that gets in, uh, indelibly printed in your brain if you've been uh, in the industry on the, on the professional side. So let's look at what happens right here. I think of these almost like support and resistance. Resistance, pullback, and now it breaks through. What might you do with that? So here's that location. There's the buy stops, there's the reaction. We come back, we check it. If this, then that. If not this, then what? It breaks out right here. Can that be a long? More fuel, more fuel. And now we get a run up to where? This. All of a sudden, this book starts thickening up. I know there's a short squeeze. I know the trend is up. And I have the next target, the microcomposite VPOC. Remember, same behavior as the VHVN, which is a micro VPOC, if you will, and or the VPOC, which changes on an interday basis, and then the microcomposite VPOC, which is something left behind from a higher time frame, intermediate time frame. So this is a magnet for this to check price check in aisle three at the super supermarket but this is my obstacle so what to do here scale ahead subject to your trade plan see the behavior reaction not surprised are you but now what happens with it since we're in a trend day going up and we have the shorts offside what are these guys doing one thing i my belief about liquidity is i really don't know what they're doing are they fading it? Are they getting short or are they taking profits up here, right? Don't know. So since I know I don't know, I just keep flowing along. Could be option hedging up here or right around 70, right? Could be anything. So I know I don't know. I let it go with that. I narrate the auction. This is just the way I do it. So this is what's important. We had the reaction here. We pull back to it. Do we fall from here or do we continue? We break out. What does that tell us? Now, this is my target. We break out. This is a stop run or stop sweep. 717 stops go off and there's the absorption. You see the selling? That's what that's telling me. There are sellers on the other side. Well, that's pretty significant. And isn't it interesting? It goes right into my target. Now, these are not my targets. They are created by the volume profile. I just read the auction in the intermediate time frame at this level. So we break above it, we pull back. We pull back. Do you see the behavior? We pull back, we check. Now, this is an obstacle for me. So in theory, I could be done. And considering we started, I think at 46 or 49, this wouldn't be a bad day. Uh, so I'm observing now, if this, then that. I would be flat, why? That's my primary target, price check in the big aisle, okay? But let's look at what happens next. This is that behavior where we saw the absorption, okay? This is the primary target, the microcomposite VPOC. Watch the behavior, except now it's in the intermediate time frame. We break out. Now, I'm sitting at a target, so I'm not going to initiate this one because we could just come up and fail. If this, then that. So what do we do? We blow past it. Does this look familiar to what we do in a shorter time frame? And we pull back. Where do we pull back? Just think of it like another VPOC. This is fractal, right? And this is my over-under. So here is a long. Where might you put your stop? Under here under here that's up to you you know we know it can be noisy and it can get ugly so you have to determine your risk reward ratio what works for you based on the target by the way what's my next target 8125 remember that that's the microcomposite low volume node which is on a higher time frame intermediate time frame that was a poorly auctioned area when you have a poorly auctioned area there's a high probability that at some point the market will go back and check it. So here we go. We, right, obstacle, break out. 
unfortunately, into a target. So I go, okay, if this, then that. For all I know, it could reverse from here, and then it could be a short for a counter rotation. On a trend day, maybe not so much, but I can mentally anticipate it and then determine if I want to participate. Or if it did happen, cover my position and wait for another opportunity to get realigned if it presents itself. So look what happens here, it pulls back. So what we're doing now is we're checking this price. Is this too high? Well, as soon as I see this, and here you have some buy stops going off and some absorption right here, sellers into this buying, and what happens? It goes this way. So long, because I'm using this to lean on, and I'm long again. Here's another obstacle right here, scale. Next target here. So you could scale or just go for the target. Uh, what I do is use fixed scales so you know how I do it. Um, if I'm risking two points or three points, whatever it is, I wanna cover my risk. I'm more concerned about the risk, the profits take care of themselves because I wanna try to get risk neutral. It's like buying a ticket to ride. So that's how I think of it. Uh, so here's an obstacle. And it's right in front of my uh, target, my next target. Remember, we wrote this down, right? And there's a stop sweep, 1,500 stops. Ouch. I'm glad it's not my stop, but that's the fuel. I'm looking now at the fuel for the reason for the market continue up. And that's why we had that huge day. It's because everybody was short on the uh, Omicron, Omicron uh, concern. So the market really had sold down and now everybody was off sides. So it's a great opportunity for a trend day. So what do we do? We pull back, test, but this comes in. Now this to me, I call this a disruptor. Somebody, it's like somebody dropping the, an anvil on the market, right? And now I'm going, well, maybe we're done. If this, then that, this is a, a, another target but I have one more target above and it's around 98. Now I know I don't know, right? None of us know, but what I know is I have a disruptor and I have a level. So let's go and see what happens. And by the way, you see this little toothy behavior here? Now this is a little more advanced. See those little high volume little uh, nodes sitting off? These are micro balances. Now this is like being at the subatomic level. Don't mean to confuse you, but this is, there isn't enough volume here to move the VPOC up, but the behavior is the same. The market is going, what do we think of this? Ah, that's too low. What about this one? Ah, that's still too low. How about up here? See? So even though what we're doing is, this is the auction in micro, and depending on how wide these are, you can actually develop plans to operate. Now, I can't trade with a scalpel, what I'm saying is the behavior is generic. So let's see what happens next. So here was the over under with the stop sweep at the uh, MCLVN, which was our target. This, this comes in and uh, I'm ready to go to the fallout shelter. Uh, we re respond to it, react to it. And are we done? I don't know, but let's look what happens here. The VPOC shifts higher. What is that telling me? Price is being accepted up here. Volume is transacting, but the market is moving higher. And this at the moment is the highest volume area. There's my obstacle. We pull back. Where are we pulling back to? This. Remember this was an obstacle? then this was an opportunity to get long if it fits your plan or to observe. I have, an, I have a target up above, so I'm thinking if this, then that. If not this, then what? This moves up, and you know I like these. Now we pull back. Where do we pull back? Here. Take a few stops out. Thanks uh, for playing. We have several parting gifts for you, and 413 stops go off. This is retail behavior. I mean, you trail your stop, you get taken out. And the thing is, even if you got taken out on a trailing stop, and of course, then you're going, ah, you know, uh, what do we see happen? Price check. Is this too high? Pull back. We're above the disruptor. Hmm. If this, then that. 
price check. Are we going to reverse and fail? Oh, price check. Pullback. VPOC moves higher. This is saying to me in a micro time frame, this is too low. Long. Up. Next potential disruptor. Let's see what happens. I think you get the idea. Uh, oh, let's let's pick up. There's your disruptor. Boom, pull back. The VPOC moves up. We have the opportunity to get long. And where does it pull back? Where to? Here, here, here. Let's look at the behavior. Long, obstacle. here, obstacle. See, this is where we came down from. And the market is saying this is too high. Price check. So all this is going on here, obstacle. So we had a price check here, long, back to the obstacle. Reverses. If this, then that. If not this, then what? Price check. Pulls back. Where will we pull back? To this one. Price check. The market is now auctioning checking prices long that's that variable high volume note which was a vpoc location long obstacle as we come back here it may reverse right if this then that up and then 98.25 is the target it actually ended up going to about 94 let me see if I have another slide for that. But you kind of get the idea, I hope. So think in the auction process. What is the market trying to do? Where might it go and check? The volume migration or that VPOC migration, which I call VHVNs, can often give you alignment with actionable locations to observe. And what I always say in our in our chat room, uh, I try to do is narrate this and in the chat room, we're not saying buy here, sell there. That's not what it's about at all. It's about areas to observe. So what happens is when the market gets to a location, I want to observe behavior. And if with book map, it gives me the opportunity to kind of look down in the granular level and try to determine who are the participants in, uh, in that area. Um, and if I can read it, and of course, like everyone else, market doesn't necessarily care what I think, but can, over cons, with consistent inputs over a period of time, I have the opportunity to execute, uh, and I understand also where my obstacles are, and that's what it is for me is to get to the obstacle and get a scale, and then try to get risk neutral, uh, offset my risk, and then see if the trade will go on to the next objective. Uh, the other thing is narrating, staying in the flow. If this, then that. To me, that's one of the most important things. It keeps me engaged with the flow of the market. And if it doesn't do something, if not this, then what? And with Bookmap, we can uh, drill down. And that's key for me. Now, let's take a look at this. If this, then that. Here's what we have. RTH opens. We get a huge move. See all those green bubbles? Buying, 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 buying. We have, now I have icebergs on here. And I didn't have it on previously. I just didn't want to clutter the chart for you. 1,200 icebergs go up. Somebody likes that. But look what happens right here. 2,375 sellers. I have to tell you, when I see that, I'm going, if this, then that. Oh, my God, then what? Because I see that, and I know there's a seller, and that is someone more sophisticated than me. They have better tools, but they also might be in a better time frame, different time frame than me. So the market bobbles around here and does some volume. Let's look at the VPOC. Here, here, see it's moving up. That's showing me that even though there's selling pressure here, that volume is moving higher as price is moving higher. So now I mark these levels, right? VHVN, right? This is where the VPOC was and I'm watching and I want to see what the behavior is. We pull back right here. And here, the selling volume starts dropping. It's a long for me. Market accelerates off. Okay, goes up, a little pullback. Let's look at the VHVN, the VPOC migration. It migrates here, and it migrates here. So now I have a price check. 
I have down here. Are we going to come back here? I hope not. But now this moved up. It is supporting my trade. More sell icebergs going on. And it seems they're not getting too far. So now we pull back. Price check. Up above the VPOC, pull back long. So longs, potential longs, longs. And here's the IB hide. Let me tell you what this is. I'm going to remind you. It's the first hour high and low. And that's called the initial balance. And it's important because since most of the business is typically done in the first hour, if we exceed that range, either high or low during the day, it indicates that the potential for a higher time frame participant moving the market. So that, and statistically, and past performance is not indicative of future results, it's in the mid 90 percentiles that either the high, first hour high or low will get taken out. So this is my target. And the first, it's this is central time, so it's 9.30, my time. So now there's the IB high. And since I have a statistic that's pretty good, pull back, and what am I going for? This scale. And since we had this driving behavior and we're trending up, extension. And look at the buy stops going off, 500, 500, 500. Does this look familiar? Does this look like our trend day? Let's see how this works. So this is about change. So if, if, if it's this, then that. If it's not this, then what is going on? Well, we're trading multiple contexts in fractal timeframes, right? So if the market returns inside the initial balance, the first hour high or low, what does it mean? And what can we do with that? Well, it sets up the potential for something, uh, a counter trend move. And when you get this kind of retracement and the market is long, where's the fuel? The fuel is all our retail sell stops underneath the market. And if you think about it, where's the fuel? Well, going up, we had the buy stops, right? And it looks like a trend day. And if we counter rotate, which is not unusual, but this is pretty different than the other day we just looked at, right? So that's why you got to kind of stay in the flow with it. So now we have the fuel, which is the stops. And what can we use that information for? Well, depending on your time frame, you could get short. Because as a retail trader, you know, if you were long, where would your stop be? And if you didn't recognize the change in context, you're just going to hang out and let your uh, your open trade, your MFE, maximum favorable excursion, slip through your fingers. And that happens, doesn't it? Now, obviously, it happens at times that we have no control, but at times if we can recognize the change in context, we have control, or at least we have options, and then it's subject to your trade plan. So we can do this. We can ride the counter trend down, assuming that there's targets out there that make it worthwhile, or we can just wait. Since it looks like we have a trend going here, and there was so much uh, volume and uh, urgent behavior and buy stops, we're going to maybe use that counter rotation towards targets that are aligned with the higher time frame fractal. In other words, continuation either, right? So the be behavior of this is uh, mean reversion. And it can happen anytime, but I want to suggest in uh, ES and NQ, uh, when the volume tends to dry up, usually over lunchtime, uh, Chicago time, you know, 11-ish to 1-ish in there, uh, we often see it mid-session because there's no volume and if you can't get those buyers, you might get those uh, tra trailing stops getting taken out. So let's look at what happens. So now we're picking up where we left off. The VPOC shifted. This is a long, by the way, and here's the obstacle, scale. Was it worthwhile to do that? Basically from here to here, nine points to 17. I don't know about you, but I'm okay with that. Now we get what's called range extension. That means we've gotten out of the first hours high or low. We break out. Now, this is when if this, then that. If we're going to continue, often, I don't want to say typically, often what happens is we pull back to this first hour high. Retail traders trail their stops up under here. The stops get picked. 
And if we're going to go higher, typically, often, after the stop pick, we extend the range. If this, then that. In fact, depending on the circumstances of what I read, uh, that might be an ad for me. Not a recommendation, just saying. Because it's if this, then that. If not this, then what? Well, guess what? We broke down. Uh-oh. Now, here's that VPOC. And what's the behavior? If this, then that. I'm thinking, okay, uh, we can go back up and check this, right? Price check. Let's go back to the resistance check. And then particularly either come back out or go down. Well, it doesn't do that. If this, now watch what happens. The VHVN is here, right? That's the price we had just left behind when we migrated up. We pull back, we bounce. Where do we tag the VPOC? Too low, too high, boom, break, uh-oh. If not this, then what? Pull back to VPOC from below. Does this look familiar? Break, VWAP, break, Y, stops. Anybody here ever trail your stop under a VWAP? Anyone here ever automatically buy when it touches VWAP? However, we check the price. I can't get long here. Why? Because there's stops stacked under this swing. Does that make sense, guys? So where are we going to go? Well, what's below? Hmm. The midpoint. 98 quarter. Now, if you're nimble and it's in your trade plan, this would be a short, short scale, possibility to come back. You're done. Nothing wrong with going to, let's say, 10 from 17. I'm all right with that. So this could be a short. And here's your obstacle. Scale or you're all out. It could be a scalp subject to your plan. Break below. Warning, Will Robinson. Check from below. We don't regain it. Potential to go lower. Where are the stops? VWAP, mid. Now, this is interesting. Now, I'm still thinking uptrend, except now I'm looking for a continuation trade, right? If this, then that. Well, where are the stops? Anybody recall where you used to put your stop? And so did I. Mid, under the mid. And look at the stops going off here. This is your fuel. Cascading stops. Everybody does the same thing. We don't want to do what they do if we can help it. Now, here's something. Look what the behavior is. You get some front running here of the mid. Boy, they are, they really want this. It moves up. Where does it go? VPOC. What does it do? Bounces off. Is this a short, perhaps? Think about it. Comes down. Now, what's under here? Stops. Stops. Cleaned everybody out. I'm now looking for the long for a continuation trade. Bounces off the mid. I see the mid buyers. It pulls back. These guys are fading. We're under VPOC. See this selling? That is the VWAP. If I had gotten long here, the VWAP is my obstacle. If I get long here, the VWAP is my obstacle. Retail traders, I anticipate selling. Pulls back, takes the stops. Gets these guys long obstacle. See the selling at the VWAP anticipated. If this, then that. If not this, then what? So I'm anticipating. I got a scale 4,100 ahead of it, 4,104.50 oh, maybe, three and a half points. I'm okay. Stop under here. Next target, VPOC. Next, IB, and so on. I hope that made some sense, um, and I apologize if it's uh, a little confusing, because it can be. But if you stay in the flow, uh, at least you can organize and think about it from an auction perspective. What is the market trying to do? And when it doesn't do what you think it's trying to do, does that offer you an opportunity, either to manage your risk or to actually reverse position, assuming it fits in your time frame? And this is all fractal. I hope this is helpful. So let's take a look here at the, uh, I call it the bonus round, the closing swing trade. Now, this is kind of advanced, and it is like the special teams, right? 
So here's the context. The market is out of balance. What out of balance, out of balance means, the higher time frame is activated. You're seeing big swings, big rotations, huge stop runs, huge icebergs. You know when you see it, outsized moves, shallow counter rotations. Uh, it's not uh, so unsimilar for what's going on uh, currently because uh, we're having a sell off ahead of the FOMC meeting. So I'm just saying is it's outsized and we're out of balance. And uh, out of balance means that we're leaving a previous area and now we're going to return and check uh, a former area. So the area above we broke out of and now we're going down to check the area below. Same process, higher time frame. So we look at the, uh, the profile and it's pretty much uh, vertical price discovery. In other words, there's really no consensus. The market's running around. It's trying to figure out what's, what's, what's it worth right now. And it can't at this moment determine a fair price. So it's auctioning, it's going around, but the chances are in the intermediate time frame, it's going to go and check a more significant price. Participants are off size. They're being squeezed. You're seeing huge stop runs, icebergs. You're seeing large icebergs firing. Okay, they might be accumulating positions or fading. And what about the retail traders? What would you do? Let's assume you're short and the market's going down. Let's say long, whatever it is, and they have a big move. Okay, and I'm going to show you two versions of this the long and the short. So, either way, but it's a big move. You're the retail trader. We are day traders. And unless you're a swing trader, what are you going to do at the end of the day? You're going to get out, right? And everyone else who's in there with you is using trailing stops. It can create a cascading effect and an outsized counter rotation. And this is what we're looking for. And this hat can happen usually two o'clock on to the to 315 central time. So into the cash close and even behind the behavior. So that's why it makes it a specialty trade. Now the counter rotation, who's going to take the other side of that counter rotation when all of us short time traders are getting out? Strong hands, higher time frame they might accumulate. And that's what's behind uh, this trend. Understanding retail trader behavior, understanding higher time frame behavior. Let's take a look at two of them. Here we go. Here's the time, 2.30. VPOC shifts up. Price check. What do we do? Too high, pull back, pull back. Sell stops going off. VPOC drops down. Is this too low? No, we go up too high. So this is the context. The, we're shifting higher, accepting uh, with potential acceptance. We move down, we're on stops. We move down, we're on stops. Okay, buy icebergs are stepping in here. We're checking this price. We move to the upside, it shifts back up. Price check in aisle three, Louis, that was too low. Up we go, long, pull back. If you didn't get it here, pull back, price check in aisle three. Well, that's still okay, long, pull back, price check in aisle three. This is your over under, long. So what was this worth? Depending where you got in, 26 to uh, let's say 34, closing swing trade and higher let's look at one more this is the market was in a short downtrend big sell-off it's the end of the day three going into the cash close the market's coming up on short covering we're getting out aren't we and buy stops fuel 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 and what's up here huh vpoc liquidity and now we go into the cash close big sell down they knock it down we're talking about five six points smack down i'm looking at this i'm going oh darn it i missed it you know i have that trade's done you know i'm done so i'm sitting here and i'm watching right and i see it pull back where vpoc i'm watching and i see this short and what's my target v1 49, 36-ish. This is the closing swing trade. It's a specialty and uh, 
again, past performance, not indicative of future results. But the reason I'm showing it to you is it's a special teams and it's all subject to context. This is not mechanical. Nothing I do is mechanical. It is based on auction market theory, uh, the developing uh, profile, how the profile uh, changes during the day and looking at what I perceive to be actionable locations and staying in the flow. Uh, I hope this is helpful. So closing bill. I know it was a lot of information and there's never enough time, but I wanna offer you an invitation. Uh, Bookmap has uh, a Discord futures chat room. Um, I do a little trader lab in there uh, and with other traders who offer good insights. Uh, and I often narrate the developing context and it is for educational purposes only. It's, it's, a, it's not a uh, trade room, nobody calls trades. That's not what it's about. It's about um, helping uh, understand context and behavior and potential obstacles. Uh, I invite you all to come in, visit, check it out. Um, and if you want to find out more about auction market theory and volume profile, there's loads of information available online. My use of the volume profile and the way I view the market is something I, that has developed for me and has evolved over many, many years. Uh, others may have completely different views of it, and that's okay too. It's really whatever works for you. Um, there's more examples up on my Twitter feed at, at Ross Tom, and I wanna thank you so much for spending some of your day with me today. Uh, thanks for your time and interest. All right, well, thank you, Tom. Thank you, uh, everybody, for, uh, for coming. Uh, and uh, look for uh, Tom in our Discord, uh, Bookmap Discord chat room, uh, and that uh, Traders Lab. Uh, it will he'll be um, uh, presenting in there very shortly. As you guys know, many of you uh, attending, uh, Tom has been doing this work already in the futures room for a while, uh, but uh, we want to give him uh, his own room in there uh, so that uh, he can. Uh, you know, further explore and, and go through this narration process with you uh, in the live market. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, look for it soon, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, also notify you about that uh, as well. Uh, so the recording for this will be up on our bookmap.com slash YouTube. Just go there. It'll redirect you to the bookmap uh, uh, YouTube channel. And uh, look for the recording if you want to uh, go back and revisit any of these. Tom, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>